Well, I'm really excited to be here. Um, you saw my avatar. It's actually an older photo. I've um, been meaning to update it, but I need to get the hair a little longer because I can't change it until I have a better mullet than the old one. So it may take a little while. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, John. I work at Netflix. Excited to be here. I, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Incremental Remix. Just a quick intro about myself, though. Uh, I've been at Netflix for about a year and a half, and I work on the developer experience. So I work on a team in the studio UI organization, and we help uh, engineers there um, remove friction, be more productive, and focus on delivering value to the Netflix studio so they can get better content out faster. Um, but I'm going to tell a story about a time I worked at another company. Uh, this company, um, they're really big into data confidentiality. I can't, I'm not going to say their name or give too many details, but I'll say they're a bookstore. And they sell some other stuff online like clothing and uh, <laughs> keyboards and cloud services. And they, they employ somewhere between like a dozen and two million employees. Um, but my team, I, I loved working with this team. They were awesome. It was a brand new team. Half of us were new hires. The other half were transfers. And we um, managed some apps and services that were used across the company. And um, right at the middle was this big Grails app. Now, I don't know if you, if you know what Grails is. It's a web framework that's similar to Ruby on Rails, uh, but it's written in Groovy, which is a language for the JVM. And so the promise of it is you get the um, expressiveness and flexibility of a language like Ruby or Groovy, but you get the, uh, you know, the performance, stability, and ecosystem of the JVM. Um, the problem was none of us had written this app, right? None of us knew Grails, none of us knew Groovy. Uh, there was no documentation. So coming in, it was really rough. And the, um, the local dev experience was painful too. You know, it would take like a minute to start up the server, about a minute to run a unit test, the app itself was this server rendered jQuery spaghetti with like Bower and old Webpack, and it was really gross. It was awful. And it was slow, right? You'd, you'd go to run your tests, you go to do a build, and it would take minutes, and the deployment was even worse. And this thing was very complicated. It was like a pile of side effects. So you change one little thing, and then everything breaks. And it was just really bad. It was, and, and I, I get it because, you know, I've built apps, and I know that over time things get more complicated. But it's a really tough situation to be in. And so we were not having fun, right? Um, and maybe this sounds familiar. Maybe you all are working on apps like this. You've been in this boat before. Maybe worse, maybe different in you know, other bad ways. Um, and we often wonder, OK, how can we get out of this, right? We, we have this horrible thing that, you know, I mean, I'm sure there were good decisions along the way that got to this point. But how do we get out of it? And it's rough. And then Remix comes along. And it's amazing and sparkly and mind-blowing. And, and you're just excited and say, OK, I want to use this everywhere. This is awesome. But how do we get from here to there, right? This is a big question in the middle, because I have this crusty old Grails thing or whatever, right? What do I do? Um, and so there's two things I want to talk about here. One is the technical problems. But before I talk about that, I want to talk about the people problems, because that's more important. And you're not going to succeed at the technical stuff if you don't get the first part right. So. You know, we might look at Remix and say, OK, it's amazing. I know I want to use it. But we're probably not working in isolation. We have a team. And so we need to think about who that is. Do we have to convince our dev manager? We have our peers, get them, on, get them on board, excited about it. Um, think about product and design, QA, deployment, infrastructure, all these things. Because all of these individuals will have other perspectives and other priorities. And we need to make sure we understand the things that they value, and we need to understand the things that they're worried about, either with the status quo or with how we might change it as we go swap out a bunch of things. And then what do they not care about? And so as we think about these questions and we think about the audience of who we're going to sell you know, on Remix, um, that'll help us in two ways. So the first is we'll really have a better idea of, is this the right thing for our app, for our company right now? Hopefully it is, but it might not be. So it's, it's good to be honest about that. And the second thing is it'll help us frame it in a way that's compelling, right? So if, if your team cares deeply about the user experience and the web vitals and, all, and these wonderful things we learned about today, but actually they don't really care about server rendering and turning off JavaScript, that's fine. I mean, Remix has a very compelling story over here. You tell that, and, uh, and that can really help sell your audience on it. But more importantly, um, you can't just tell them about it. You got to really show them. And so there's two big things I want to talk about here. The first one is data and metrics. 
So, um, you know, we saw a lot of great stuff today with like um, web page tests and, um, uh, all, you know, all these wonderful things we can do to understand how our apps um, uh, works today, right? So we really want to get good numbers as far as what is the user experience like? What are the builds and deployments like today? And what can we do to figure out what that will look like under Remix? So build some demos, build some POCs. You know, you can't just go rewrite the whole app, but maybe you can take a small thing that's representative of what your app does and, you know, take your app and then redo that small slice in Remix and get some real numbers on what that looks like. Um, so one thing I've done at Netflix is um, build a few demos, right? So uh, a couple months back, um, there we go, too many tabs, sorry. Okay, how's that size? Let me go up a little bit. So I'll go one more, okay. I mean, the content's not super important here, but the, the main things I wanna call out, I, uh, I built an app that I wanted to make it pretty representative of how apps are built in Netflix, right? So. The things I'm using here are standard Netflix tools. I'm using the uh, component library that we maintain internally for studio apps. I'm talking to actual Netflix services to get this data. Um, and so some of it's GraphQL, some of it's REST, right? And so this is my information because I'm logged in and another user sees something else. And then this is deployed on standard Netflix infrastructure that uh, UI devs use day in and day out. Um, so that's one thing, trying to make it as, as close of an approximation to what a real app is like. And then the other thing is, I actually have a more representative real app here because it's the same app, but written in Create React app, which is kind of the default for a lot of teams in Netflix. Um, so we can compare them, they're identical, apart from some text, we can do these things. And then you can get an apples to apples comparison of what is the code like and how does it change as far as DX goes as you're writing apps. And then we can also see how does the performance change so we'll pop up in the network tab here. Um, and yeah, I mean, you've seen demos like this before, but it's just fun to see it, especially if it's like your stack and it's your type of stuff. How does it actually look? So Remix, we reload. And I'm on slow 3G, but it's pretty quick. The bottom part took a second to pop in, but that's a, that's a problem in the component library with some use effect, which as we've learned today, we don't want to do, right? So we'll fix that, but the data's all there, the, the page is all there very quickly. Create React app. Refresh, oh, if I hit the right shortcut, let's see. So you get your white screen, okay. Oh, there's a spinner, okay. Oh, another spinner, and then, oh, then the last one for that nested route. And you can really see the difference night and day, right, as you highlight these different components and see how the data loading is affected by this cascade, uh, cascade approach. Um, so I want you all to kind of think about this as you're thinking about your apps. What sort of demos or POCs could you do to really showcase how Remix is gonna help uh, your app be better? All right, uh, the next thing is make it dead simple. Because you can do demos like this, but if at the end of the day, it's hard for your team to actually incorporate that or use it day in, day out, it's not gonna be successful. Um, so you, know, you can't really re rewrite the whole app immediately. That's gonna take some time. So we need to do something incremental so we can do it uh, one piece at a time. And we need to make sure it's very easy. So, you know, we look at Remix and we say, it's awesome, it's so easy, like what's the problem? The problem is you have this crusty legacy app. If you have to go do a whole bunch of like cloud formation, cloud front uh, origin stuff to add each route for your new thing, like that's not ideal. You want adding new Remix stuff in your old thing to be just as easy as it is in a brand new Remix app. And so on that note, we want to try to automate, build scripts, do whatever we need to do to make this as smooth as possible. Um, so another thing I've done kind of in this sense, uh, in this area here, um, you know, when stacks were announced, one of my coworkers said, you know, if we make an internal to Netflix remix stack, we don't call it the chill stack, I'm quitting. So I, I did not want him to quit, he's awesome, right? So um, I said, okay, cool, let's make some stacks. So we've got a couple stacks that we use internally. Um, it's still very much early days of remix in Netflix. Um, but there's the chill stack, which is just the basics. And then the big band stack gives you a whole ensemble of things that you might want in a typical app. And so that looks uh, like this. So you generate a new app, it spits you out a nice readme and the whole structure. And the app actually has all of those things that we saw in that demo app I built and a little bit more. So if we go look at it, this is one I spun up and let me make it a little bigger here. So this is running on Netflix infrastructure. So you run that create remix stack you push the commit and then it's deployed to a couple environments and you're pretty much ready to go. 
Um, so we have the standard links you get in a, in a uh, Remix stack, but then a couple of those sorts of demos, right? So using actual backend services in the ways that Netflix developers do, and then even more advanced demos, which I now want to go rewrite with uh, Remix forms, because um, there's some, you know, it's not as good, right? It's not as, not as fancy, but, um, but still, it's, it's just fun to be able to have this stack ready to go and then see, yes, it actually works, right? I can, like, do my little thing here, and I can turn off JavaScript, right? And it all still works, and it's, it's really fun. Um, so yeah, let's, well, if I could type correctly, right? So as we've seen before in a lot of demos, it's, it works wonderfully even with JavaScript turned off. All right, so um, demo. OK, so we've talked about these different things and ways we can kind of bring our audience along, get them excited about Remix, and make it easy. But then the question is, we have this crusty old app. How do we make it easy? And so there's a few kind of high-level things to think about. Um, this will affect your strategy for what you do to to make Remix possible in your app. So how is this thing architected? Um, is it server-side rendered? Is it a single-page app? Some collection of things? Do you have any kind of CDN? Um, think about your UI, right? Like maybe it's not even a React app at all, and so you know maybe that's more of a migration than an upgrade. Um, but again, there, there's different strategies we'll take depending on the answers to these different questions of how we build and test and deploy our apps. And so I kind of look at it as a spectrum here, right? On the far left, uh, you've got things like React Router single page app. That's actually a very easy upgrade to do to get onto Remix. And then on the far right side, you have like a legacy black box you never want to touch again, and you just kind of want to route around the damage and build new things, you know, and gradually replace it. And so the, the answer to both, though, is great. It's provided by Remix, right? Routing is the key. And so we'll see how that works. OK, so React Router single page app. Um, the idea is you upgrade your app to Remix and you gradually move routes. And um, the Remix team put together some awesome stuff on this recently. There's a great guide and a sample repo you can go look at. Um, so I won't spend a lot of time on it. But the quick summary is you just install Remix. You do some root route stuff, some catch-all stuff. Start bundling with, with uh, Remix so you get ES build. And then you just move over routes one at a time. And it's a great, easy process to do. Um, and you're on your way. OK, what if you have React and a, you know, it's a single page app, but you don't have React Router, or you have some other kind of router? Um, this basic approach can still work, right? So if your app has a router, I've got a little rhyme that'll help you remember it, right? Go back a slide and follow the guide. OK, so it's pretty, pretty easy. The same guide works. There may be a little nuance with the router you're using, but it generally works pretty well, and I'll show a demo in a moment. OK, what if your app doesn't have any routing? Like, OK, you might think, well, that's more complicated. It's actually not. The, uh, the rhyme is more complicated, but the, the solution is just as easy, right? So you go back to the previous slide, follow that glorious guide, make routes with the plum because routing's the bomb, and Tim Berners-Lee will feel pride. <laughs> so if I had more time, because I like to like Photoshop stuff, I would have done a little eye roll here, you know, but <laughs> next time. All right. So here's a quick demo of a non-React router single page app. This app is using a different routing library called Wouter with a W, it's actually a thing. And um, you can see I have my old app here with a few pages, right? And um, not a whole lot going on, but page one, page, or page two and page four, I'm using their route component. And then I have right here my main Remix app, and so I just have a catch-all route that points to that old app uh, root component, right? And so we go look at that. It's not the prettiest app, but you know, you've got, uh, here we're on page two, we can go to the home page. And as you can see, page two is old, page four is old. That old app text is coming from that um, main app component of the old app, but it works seamlessly. You can navigate between them. All right, um, okay, now everything else. This is the big one, right? So this could be other front-end frameworks. This could be like kitchen sink things like Next. This could be server-rendered Rails, could be anything. And so you've got a few options that you can try. And there's actually, you can even mix and match depending on what you want to do and how much of the UI you want to move at a time. So option one, and this is really good if you're in the prototyping phase and you're trying to sell your team, is the old app still owns the routes, right? You can incrementally migrate nested routes and layouts. And you can either do that by proxying or iframing your new Remix app, right? So if you have, you know, your team is like, uh, super cautious and they don't want to introduce a new thing and stick anything in front of your app, you could kind of try it incrementally this way. 
um, but then hopefully move to one of, the, one of the other approaches. So the second approach is you maybe have a CDN, maybe you have some sort of reverse proxy in front. That can own kind of these uh, app level route boundaries. So it maybe doesn't own all of the routing, but you could say like, oh, this new URL products, that's gonna be in Remix. And so you control that at kind of the, the CDN layer or the proxy. And then the third option, which I recommend, is, oh yeah, and I kind of skipped that little note. Uh, the third option is Remix owns the routes, right? So similar to the very first approach, but it just flipped around, Remix owns everything, and then you decide how exactly you want to uh, load your old pages and routes. So a note on what do I mean by proxy and iframe. Okay, so proxy, the full request comes into your app, it takes that, it says, okay, I know this URL should be handed, by, handed off to this thing over here, give me some data, give me an HTML page, whatever, and then bring the response back and send it to the browser. Um, one note about this is because it's entire pages at a time, if you have any navigation or shared you know, layouts or components, you may need to find a way to either duplicate those or, or share them across the apps. But if you're going from one React framework to another, um, oftentimes you'll have you know, good success sharing those components or reusing them. Okay, iframe. So you embed one app within another. So essentially it's a browser window within the browser window. But if you do it well, it can actually feel very seamless to the end user. Um, and this enables some more incremental approaches. So, um, and it also lets you, to, lets you um, um, only have one Navra layout at a time, right? So we'll look at some demos of that. So um, the, first, um, the first one is the proxy approach, right? So if you're going to proxy and remix, um, a fairly straightforward forward way to do that is to have a loader and an action in a catch-all route, like we have here, and they have a proxy handler. And I've got a link to the code in a little bit. This is not the best proxy handler. I slapped it together, but um, we can make something a little more robust and, and get it, uh, do the job. But this works well, as we'll see in a demo in a moment. So the idea is that a request comes in, we know it should actually go somewhere else, and we go make that request wherever it needs to go and get the response and send it back. All right, iframes. Similar, but instead of actions and loaders, we're doing a, a component, right? And so we have a component that looks a little bit uh, at our current URL and has a little bit of state to know what's happening because there's some complexities around navigations that happen within the frame versus above it. Um, and so we do a little bit of post message fun to know what's going on. But all told, it's um, you know, like 60 lines of code, so it's not terrible. Um, and we have an iframe that then loads the code, or loads the, uh, the page on the other site. Um, and then you can use that component in your catch-all route, or you can go use it anywhere you want. For example, here I've got like a dashboard URL, and I wanna actually conditionally show either the old or the new UI based on some kind of user setting. And so since we've kind of pulled this more into the component side of things instead of actions and loaders, we can have that lever and we can really be uh, really intentional about which things we load and at what level. All right, um, so I mentioned before, I had this crusty old Grails app. Now this was a few years ago, it was before Remix. Um, those were darker times, but we had Create React app, we had CloudFront, we had a lot of things that worked well. We had React Router, of course, and um, we actually pulled this off. We did some of these same strategies, iframing and proxying, and we were able to gradually I, I shouldn't say we did it because I, I think it's probably still in progress, but um, we came up with a strategy to move our worst pages that you know, were the slowest and the most touched and all those things into this new framework and it worked really well um, and it made for a very seamless user experience. Unfortunately, it's closed source, I don't have it, but I do have a crusty old Rails app. Um, so the app I'm gonna show you, this is Canvas LMS and I feel justified in saying it's crusty and old because I worked on it for like six years and I, I helped make it crusty and old, so I'm partially to blame. I'm actually wearing a Canvas shirt right now. So, uh, but yeah, this is Canvas. It's, uh, it's a lot of code, right? You look at this, just Ruby alone is like almost a million lines of code, ignoring comments and all that stuff. Lots of JavaScript, TypeScript is on its way up, but it's, it's tons of stuff. This thing is super complicated. Um, and this is what Canvas looks like. So it's a learning management system for universities and schools. It's got tons of stuff, like tons of nested routes. I should have pulled that up because there's the, the routes.rb file is massive. There's just so much stuff it does. Um, but it's, it's powerful and it's, I mean, it's a very um, fully featured uh, application. All right, so in the next tab, I have Canvas behind Remix and I proxy to it. So what I've done here, you can see the left nav looks a little bit different. 
Um, this is Remix Conf. It's not CSS Conf. So, so you can see it's, it's, it's honestly, it, it looks really bad. Okay, so let's we'll move on. But I have a new dashboard. I've decided I want to do some different things on the dashboard, but my loader is going and getting my courses from the API. And I've even implemented a new route so I can go see, oh yeah, you know, here's a cool nested thing. But now if I navigate up a level to Remix 101, the name of this course, I'm actually back on an old page and I have the old nav here. And so depending on where I navigate in the app, um, I will see either the entire old UI or the entire new UI. Um, so that does require us to sort of duplicate these different components or find a way to share them, which if you're using React may not be too bad. Okay, iframing. Same page, um, one, one minor difference. I mentioned that dashboard thing, right? So here we can actually do something like, well, I don't like this new dashboard. I'm gonna go back to the old one for a while and, and stick with that until they fix all the, all the UI bugs in the new thing. Um, and this gives you a lot more flexi flexibility because you can have those little levers at various points within your app and decide if you wanna show the new thing or the old thing. Additionally, as we navigate around, uh, you'll see that we are always on the new nav because now Remix owns the page. And so the only thing that's the iframe is this, uh, this right here. I've got the outlet, the, uh, the catch-all for that, uh, that route there. Um, so it gives you uh, some, some fun uh, ways to uh, gradually move your app. Um, so yeah, the, uh, the links or the, the code for these uh, last three demos, it's up here on GitHub. So it's under my GitHub. If you can't remember that big long URL, just remember the first part and it's the top pinned repo. Um, on my profile. I don't have the other uh, Netflix ones available, but if you want to see them, just come by and I'll show you on the laptop if you want to see the code for that. Um, and some parting thoughts, uh, Remix is awesome, so are you, and so go make awesome stuff. <laughs>